Supreme Court will today decide the fate of five governors whose elections had been under litigation for the past nine months. The Apex Court had reserved judgment in the various appeals against the elections of the governors shortly after arguments were concluded by their respective lawyers in the separate cases. The five states whose go governorship appeals will by law expire between January 21 and 22 are Nasarawa, Delta, Gombe, Kebi and Ogun. Okay, so it's like, uh, it's judgment week. <laughs> I mean, it by, sure you know, is. starting it be sure taking is. a number of, um, some people now have, can heave a sigh of relief and get on with the business of governance, while others are still waiting to hear what the Supreme Court will say with regards to deciding their fate. Your take on this story? Well, I sure do hope that we can continue the conversation that had started before elections, which was about taking a page out of Kenya's book and ensuring that litigation is completed before people are inaugurated into office. Uh, you see the unnecessary distraction that this causes when there's so many issues, urgent issues uh, that need to be tackled and addressed. Uh, so I think this is definitely, we've seen a good case put forward for the fact that litigation does need to happen before inauguration. And of course, um, before uh, on, to add to that, excuse me, is the fact that with the last judgments, of course, the Court of Appeal uh, seemed to, to overshadow the actual rulings. So we'll be interesting today to see whether the Court of Appeal will also remain the center of focus in the post-judgment conversation. All right. We're fine. I mean, so a very good point you made there, Evan Baez, regards taking a playbook from Kenya. But Kenya did not get there over time. Kenya got there with a lot of false starts. If you remember the elections, you know, uh, the long fight between the likes of Raila Odinga and uh, the former president then of Kenya. Uh, these were the things that necessitated that change in the system in such a way that it now became an order of the day that you do, you know, the court sits on the elections two weeks after the elections, they give you a verdict and they can move on from there and so that people can now, you know, breathe a heave a sigh of relief. But we as Nigerians, we need to be able to perfect the electoral process. At first, the fact that we are going to court speaks volumes about our electoral system. And whoever is the head of our electoral system must be like Caesar's wife aboard board. Because no matter how good an electoral system is, it's also a comment on the strength of the institution that does that election. You're talking about Kenya. The reason why Kenya had some sanity was because the likes of a certain man called Wafula Chibokati that stood tall, despite the fact that other people too in the electoral system wanted to disrupt the electoral system. So we are going to see the cases in Nasara. We want to see what happens in Nasara because Nasara has been a hotbed. So women protested recently and said, let's uphold the rule of law and justice as regards the peace between the APC and the PDP. We would also want to see what pounds out your data and Ogu. Ogu. In the case of Ogu, you have, you know, uh, Mr. Adibu to go in and up, up against the governor. There's been a lot of back and forth and break back in the state and a couple of other states out there. So we would also look and see if the Court of Appeal Justice got it right. Because constantly we've had a case where the Court of Appeal Justice did not get it right. And that's a big indictment on our judicial system. And please, after the judgment today, hope some people will not come out and start saying all sorts of uh, funny things like we thank the president for not interfering in the judicial system. Let's sound a note of warning. The president is the head of the executive, which is an equal arm like judiciary. He has non-interference in it. Let the judiciary do its work. And let's stop ascribing all of these things to the president. Um, at the Supreme Court, uh, they will be deciding the fate of five governors whose elections had been under litigation. And we have a rise correspondent, Godfrey Ishomoge, with us. Good morning, Godfrey. Good to see you. All right. The Supreme Court... Okay, uh, Godfrey, uh, just very quickly, I can see a lot of activities uh, behind you. And as we already spoke about earlier today, the fate of five governors would be decided today by the Supreme Court as their timeline for decision for appeals, election appeals is coming to an end very shortly. What are, what's the mood like at the courts this morning? And what is the, have, have lawyers started arriving? And what time would we, I, I would expect that it would be starting very shortly. Yeah, right about now, in, in, uh, I, I think by this moment, they should be starting the Supreme Court uh, hearing proceedings to decide the fate of six state governors, actually, not five. We have Delta, Nasarawa, Ogun, Kebi, Kaduna, and Gombe states.
So, uh, yeah, so six. Uh, we just got to know about Kaduna this morning where we, uh, uh, you know, handled the cost list. So six governors, uh, six state governments, uh, governors will be knowing their fate today at the Supreme Court. As for the logistical arrangement here, it's a frenzy. Uh, people trying to frantic efforts to find their way in to the courtroom where the justices will be delivering the, ju the, ju the decision on these uh, appeals. In fact, uh, to my right, to my left, uh, Martins, uh, my cameraman, will give you a, a, a glimpse of what is going on here. We have a lot of people still sitting outside the courtroom uh, who couldn't find their way in. Uh, that's to tell you how eager the people are to in the, in the Supreme Court today to know uh, what will uh, the decisions be. Uh, even, even lawyers too are still couldn't find their way in because it's the procedure to access in this place had to do with uh, uh, your access and your access tag. So of course uh, the, the, the mood here is upbeat uh, because people here, politicians and lawyers alike who are interested parties want to have a sense of uh, what will transpire today with respect to what will happen. But one key case that will stand out of the six is that of Nasarawa State. There's so much in the build up to this. Of course, you know in the, in the past days we've had past days and weeks, we've had protests uh, from the uh, PDP side, that's the candidate of the PDP, David Ombugadu, who is uh, that person who said he was hard done by, who, who felt he was uh, robbed of his right to be declared winner of the governorship election. Here, the justices at the Supreme Court will give, will give a sense of finality All to right, these sir. claims. If Godfrey, indeed thank you he for won the majority of valid vote cast. Right, not. thank you for painting that picture. And of course, you know, all eyes on Nasarawa. What about the, some of the other states that you mentioned there? Uh, is there any tension whatsoever, given the way things went last time, especially with the Supreme Court, uh, you know, giving such a harsh uh, uh, outlook on the work of the Court of Appeal? Uh, well, we, we, do not see, we do not see anything spectacular coming out of the judgments today because precedence has been set from last week. Matters with regards to qualification of candidates, uh, those are already known issues. So it, won't be, it will be a no-brainer with respect to whether or not uh, the decision will sway either way. Of course, we already know, based on precedence, any matter with regards to nomination of political uh, of a candidate or political party, we already know what the decision will, of the Supreme Court will be. So one can easily predict the outcome. So Nasrawa, in, on the other hand, remains the standout case, standout case where people are keeping their fingers crossed with respect to what the justices will uh, will decide. You know, looking at the fact that uh, the governor won the election and, and the electoral body, INEC, announced uh, Abdullah Suli as winner of the election, but then he lost out at the tribunal stage. So that's 1-1, one, one, if you like, using football terms. So Supreme Court will now be the final decider. That is what people are eagerly waiting to see where the pendulum will swing. Okay, real quickly. Expectations arrive, uh, people are looking for as regards to What about the Ogun case? Uh, you want to give us some updates as regards to that? Well, the Ogun case too, uh, well, I uh, Adebu too, well, he, he's, he has a, a, a strong case, but then we just, people just have the sense of, uh, uh, well, maybe he, he may, well, I don't want to preempt just the decision of the justices. I would just say we'll keep our fingers crossed. We keep our fingers crossed on that one and we'll await the, the decision of the justices in regard to that. And able to uh, seem to have a strong case, but then the justices will decide if indeed he has a strong case with regard to that. Well, thank you very much, Godfrey. I'm sure that you will bring us more updates as uh, judgments unfold in the course of today's uh, sitting.